morning. Welcome to Truth Point, your program of personality, politics, and perspective. This morning we're going to have a nice perspective. We certainly have a, uh, personalities. We have two personalities. Uh, by the way, Judith Kay, you'll recall that we try to start... Uh, Viewpoint with well, a good to or recall, two. this time is is a little bigger job than it usually was. Well, we yeah, haven't we, been we here have, for maybe the here maybe now. the people forgot who we are. Oh, I hope Jim never Jim Ash doesn't forget who we are. <laughs> uh, Mr. Andrews, you'll recall we always try to start viewpoint with a kudo, and I think it'd be more than appropriate, Mrs. Busby, if we let John Andrews be our kudo today. Uh, John has served us, served the, our community very, very well as director of our uh, Lincoln Park District out there. And John is stepping into retirement slippers, and uh, as we'll talk about. But it just seems to be appropriate that uh, we ship the kudos in his department, uh, in his direction today, because he has done a fine job for the community. And uh, he's going to be missed out there. He's got an excellent uh, young successor. Or is she's young? <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, let's get right on. Uh, go ahead, Mrs. Busby, and introduce our guest this morning. Of course. Um, John Andrews, we're going to talk about when Honoree he's... of the day. Yes, <laughs> when he started out at the, the uh, rec, and his replacement has been with him for four years now, mm -hmm. and uh, she's just followed every directive he's ever given, I'm certain, <laughs> right? <laughs> and... Uh, Abby O'Brien is taking his place. She used to be, not terribly long ago, she used to be Abby Niece. So we have another hometown, homegrown person leading sure the good. rec center. <laughs> yeah, and that's good news. John, when did you start out there? Well, I started in uh, 1990. Um, I was just sitting around one day, and they were short a board member, and and uh, Clarence Barney got a hold of me oh, and asked me that. if I would serve. And I said, sure, i uh, be glad to. And so I was on the board for, well, since 1990 till 2015. Served as president for six or seven years until I took over as director in 2015. But what a perfect fit, you and the rec, because it, I think it, when I've ever thought about you, I think about athletics. Well, that's part of it. Um, the business has changed quite a bit over the years. Oh, no doubt. And um, I found out that I'm kind of uh, not keeping up, keeping up with the young trends. And Abby, that's why we hired her, because she's in touch with everything. But uh, we've done a lot of nice things over the years. So, What's your most proud accomplishment, John? Can you narrow it down to that? <clears throat> well, I don't know. There's several, Judy. Um, <clears throat> Building our pool, our new pool for the community was a, big thing. was a wonderful thing. Uh, we were kind of forced into it, and it was a blessing in a way because our pool was 40 years old, and we had done many times uh, support things to keep it going, and then when the Graham Baker Finch Act came out, uh, all the pools across the nation had to. Um, redo their drainage systems. Um, oh, I don't know if people were familiar with that, but uh, uh, Graham Baker Finch, uh, Baker was one of our leaders in the Congress in, in Washington at the mm -hmm. time, and unfortunately his granddaughter was in some type of uh, water vessel, and they drained it, and she was taken down to the bottom, and she drowned. So the Graham Baker Finch Act uh, was a situation where you had to put in new drains to prevent things like that from happening. So yeah. it was going to cost us 150000 just to figure out what to do because nobody knew what to do. Uh -huh. So we just decided to go ahead and build a new pool. Kind of gives you an appreciation for where the county board stands right now. You know, they've, they've done the same thing. You can kick the ball down the road just so long before you have to bite the bullet. And I hope to God that they see their way clear to do something permanent about saving that courthouse since they've talked about <coughs> maybe we ought to just level it. Well, uh, the taxpayers are going to have something to say about that. And do I you urge think? Them, I urge them all to, to, 
vote yes on that referendum, my goodness, it's just a, such a small amount of money. I had no idea anybody in the world ever cared how I felt about anything. <laughs> <laughs> well, I had to cut her off there, but I was afraid she was going to go somewhere, John. I didn't know where she was going. She, she, she headed out towards Burtonview, and then she took her own towards Broadwell. <laughs> The uh, the management of that pool is a very serious, uh, very serious business. It takes. Uh, I'm sure you have lots of regulations, tons of regulations oh, that have to be followed. And uh, uh, I presume and would hope that the folks who do the inspection on these various facilities, such as yours, uh, are well qualified and uh, are not just political hacks. No, no. This the, the fellow that comes uh, and um, inspects the pool. He's been the same fellow for several years, and um, they're pretty strict. I mean, they'll let you know if you need to correct something, uh, which is a good thing. Um, but it does take a lot to run a pool. We have a pool manager that we hire for the summertime. Um, we have 25 to 26 guards that we have to hire every year, which is not much considering Springfield hires 75 to 80 guards. So oh boy. I felt kind of blessed just having 25 but um, yeah. Abby now is a certified pool operator she got her license so um, she'll be able to handle things from here on out are there a lot of different kinds of certifications that you'll be responsible for holding um, as you take over for John I don't know I mean definitely I care about my education a lot so um, an ongoing education as well there's definitely certifications I would like to get but I wouldn't say they're necessary but if you want to keep up with the trends and issues and be on top of everything I feel like you should mm -hmm. say for my second job could I get a job out there as a, a lifeguard uh, you know? <laughs> I, pass, I have my water safety instructor's rating. <laughs> Is it up to date? <laughs> well, uh, Herb Alexander passed me on. Oh, wow. during, the, during the old days of Learn to Swim Week. Yep. And I wanted to be a water safety instructor. And so we had to undergo some rather serious swimming tests. And I thought I was gone one day with Herb put his arms around me and down at the bottom of the lake we went. I was supposed to show him how I'm going to rescue him. <laughs> I want to tell you, I earned that certificate that day. <laughs> did you take your test at Lincoln Lakes, Bill? Yeah. Yeah, so did I. Yeah. yeah. Not, well, yeah. there wasn't a wreck then. No. Uh, Not with a pool. John, uh, correct me, uh, memory blank is kind of fading in and out here this morning. The original wreck was on the corner uh, where the Edward E. Jones office is, uh, by, uh, by Washington Park. Yeah, it was it was real close there. It might have been a now, little further we, to the east, I maybe. I think we had a World War II barracks running in there or something. I, I have no idea about yeah, that. I think <laughs> <we did>. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's where it was. I uh -huh. remember that. Yeah. Signing right. up for Little League in there. Mm -hmm. Signed up for a little league, and here he is retiring already. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's gone fast. You know, yeah, I'm sitting here thinking. I hit John Andrews across from me, my former neighbor, until they ran me out of the neighborhood. Um, <laughs> and uh, one day I said to his daddy, Pete, I said, you know, you make a good alderman. Well, Pete agreed finally after a little talking to. Him. And there we and that, and he's the reason. That's the reason that Pete Andrew became mayor of, of our community. Was we got him, we you got him, pushed him up the ladder. I pushed him up the ladder. Got him in to serve as an alderman. And I always felt pretty good about that. I thought he served us well. Uh, certainly well, well intentioned, and and uh, I thought I thought we had ourselves a good mayor. Yeah, he did a good job. He was mm -hmm. he was. Um, I don't, I don't want to say naive you know about the business world and the people dealing with them but uh, he was to me he was too nice a guy he just tried to please everyone <laughs> to get into yeah. politics you're exactly, yeah. <laughs> you're exactly correct yeah, you, you can't, can't be that, do that. Yeah. Oh, so, heck. But so Abby tell us about your you mentioned your education a minute ago tell us about that because yeah. that's very important um, so I got my undergraduate degree from Illinois State 
uh, in recreation management and then um, got the job at the park district as program coordinator and um, about a year in I decided I wanted to get my master's so um, I looked at online programs so I could keep working um, and I got into a program at the U of I for recreation um, sports and tourism so I got my master's in that and then got some other certifications along the way and then hopefully um, I will begin to start my CPRP which is a certified parks and recreation professional certification so yeah it's never ending for me I feel what? but she well, comes bless your heart. Listen, Mr. Andrews, are we paying her enough? She comes with some pretty good credentials. Yeah, really. uh, That was a question, yes. <laughs> well, yes. you know, anymore, well, you hard. have to have some credentials. Yeah. How did you choose uh, Parks and Recreation over being an MBA or an MSW or what have you? Yeah, um, well, first I went to Lincoln Land. I got my associate's degree in Lincoln Land, at Lincoln Land in Springfield. And when I went to ISU um, to finish my uh, education there, I, I was, you know, debating on what I wanted to do and mm -hmm. whatnot. And I always loved planning events and the organization of, you know, different kind of athletics and I always I played sports growing up so for me they said well why don't you try parks and recreation and I said okay sure so I took a couple classes and fell in love and Good here you. we are <laughs> so and you. here you are yes. well you've got some big shoes and I don't mean uh, 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 <laughs> oh god <laughs> We know, we know physically they are, but uh, uh, metaphorically speaking, you, you've you got some pretty doggone good moccasins to fill. Yeah. Uh, John, I'm not trying to stroke him here on air. He's a pretty nice guy to me, but... Uh, yeah, but that's lucky because you've got uh, something to work with, you know. So I'm sure that there are other people who have a comparable education, and when they get into the work-a-day world, they could find them a real mel of a hess someplace, well, you know. She's had a good leader. Uh, yeah. And, uh, uh, you know, you pick up things when you're bright and young. Uh, you got to pick up things without being taught them. You're just smart enough to assimilate. Uh, this should be done this way and that should be done this way. Uh, so we're happy to have you. Uh, well, that's a great description. I like that, Bill, because Abby is just like that. You know, I don't have to tell her to do this over here. You know, she'll already have it done when I mention <laughs> it. So yeah. um, she's very aware and she's uh, she pays attention to details. You know, which is very important anymore. Yeah, I get told that every day at home. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of details, um, we have. Uh, details every Wednesday morning and that one of those details is we have to pay homage to our sponsors who make these programs possible so if Mr. Ash is ready to console if he can move the cat off of the control board <laughs> we'll uh, bring on our sponsors right now Good morning and welcome back to Viewpoint, your program of personalities, motivation, and perspectives. Where the old order changeth and giveth way to the new. That would be our uh, motto this morning. John Andrews, uh, friend and former neighbor, until he ran me out of the neighborhood, uh, <laughs> is with this morning. And John has done a fine job as director of our Lincoln Park District in several capacities. And uh, as of January 1, uh, he decided that. Uh, Abby O'Brien could do a better job than he does, and uh, so, <laughs> and so she's going to continue to work hard. She, uh, that's why she's there uh, as our new director because of her uh, abilities and uh, her interest in doing a job well. So we appreciate both of you being with us this morning. Uh, how big a staff you work with out there, uh, Abby? Oh gosh, I think we have seven, eight full-time staff, and then we, um, in our Fit Zone workout facility, we have about, what do you think? Ten. Ten, ten or, or so, Yeah, ten or eleven part-time staff, and then in the summer with the guards, you know, we have 25, 26 lifeguards, we have grounds crew help, um, and yeah. Now, are you responsible for all the parks in town, too? Well, right now... <laughs> I mean, as far as upkeep, like. 
Yeah, we maintain all of them, uh -huh. but um, some are still the city's and then some are ours. We've been in the process of trying to get all of the parks under our jurisdiction, but we're still in that process we're right We're waiting now. to hear yeah. from... I, I approached the city council about a month ago and explained to them that if they would deed the parks over to us, uh, we would be able to use our OSLAD grant money to Ooh. put pavilions in those parks, put other things in those parks, because they're not being developed. Um, the they city doesn't have money. Well, what did it. they say to you, John? It sounds like a no-brainer. Thank you. They're, yes. they're still thinking about it. <laughs> mm -hmm. So, and I don't know if my retirement slowed them down or whatever, but yes, it's it a, didn't speed them up. No. <laughs> I mean, I, I, they, I think they all felt that it was a good idea, but the process moves slow, you know, with government. And we hope to get it done here shortly because our OSLAD period is coming up to apply for that grant. Well, so, and summer's coming up. Right. And it, it's yeah. t time that the parks are, are going to be utilized more right. fully. Yes, take heart folks, we will start getting some warm weather. This is uh, January, just going to be a little short time, suddenly it will be spring, happily. And uh, the. Uh, Do you have parks outside the city or are you strictly a city outfit? Uh, we just are in the yeah. city. We uh -huh. have uh, um, Exchange Park is by Jefferson Street Church out there. Mm -hmm. These are park district owned parks. Right. Uh, Memorial Park we own and um, Lennon Fink's Park. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. But yep. there's four city parks that we also take care of. So we have seven total to take care of. Mm -hmm. um, but if I can just get them to sign them over then we can start putting some money or Abby can start putting <laughs> some money into these parks. Well I kind of sense that uh, your sense of responsibility is going to stay with you, John. Uh, you're community-minded. Uh, you got that. Uh, you inherited that very nicely from your dad, Pete, and uh, the, it inures to our benefit to have somebody who, who has that sense of responsibility and continuity. So uh, I hope you prevail upon them to uh, make it easier for you. The cat did not want to go out. Well, it's strange <laughs> enough. So, so. Make up your mind. <laughs> <laughs> the uh, television camera doesn't catch the cat going in and going out. What is your uh, uh, your biggest challenge, uh, Abby, as you uh, settle into the director's chair? And there are many. But what would you consider maybe perhaps your biggest challenge? Um, I mean, I'm still transitioning right now with everything, but I would say just making sure everyone's on the same page going forward, moving forward, and, you know, that the workplace is has good morale and we're all moving toward the same goal. Mm -hmm. So, but, yeah. Now, you know, we mentioned a pool hall goal. Uh, we just can't come up to May 1st and say, well, the pool's going to open. There's a lot of preparation <laughs> that goes into that. Yeah. And here we are in January, and I suspect that that's probably one of the things that you have on your agenda mm -hmm. is in your planning is to make sure that that's an easy uh, opening transition and lots of regulations uh, connected to operating a, a pool, privately or, or public pool. Uh, hopefully the folks who are doing the inspecting there know what the heck they're doing. That's mm -hmm. very, very important. Uh, uh, tell us a little bit about that pool. Now, there are some new features that you've built into our new pool, and it's quite nice. <coughs> and I, I'm told that you've had good response out there. So I'll just take it to pass that ball to you, John. Okay. <laughs> well, um, yeah, it was a wonderful addition to the community. Um, we did add several items, such as a uh, zero depth pool for the toddlers. A lot mm -hmm. of them call it a toddler pool. And it has functions in it. Um, I don't know, a pirate spitting out water or something, and a palm tree showering the kids. Um, and then we also have a slide that we put in um, that goes into its own pool. So there's three different vessels. The other vessel is our, our swimming pool, our actual swimming pool. I think it's six lanes, 25 meters. So we've had several, the high school has come and practiced there. Uh, of course the college has a pool, but sometimes it hasn't been available. So if the timing is right, 
uh, they'll come to our place and swim. So um, it's been a nice addition, very nice addition. The scheduling must be kind of a challenge because if, if you're going to close it so that the high school, for instance, can use it, that would make some of the people torque that were coming out there to yeah, the good peel thing, around. <laughs> right. The good thing about it, Judy, is these uh, swim teams, they get up early in the morning. Mm -hmm. So they swim at 7 o'clock in the morning uh, when the water's about 75 degrees or whatever. So mm -hmm. that really didn't affect the rest of our scheduling. No, uh, you'll have to hire lifeguards. And what is the procedure for that, Abby? Well, we have a pool manager, as John said. Her name's Amber Jordan. She's a teacher um, in Lincoln. And I will say, she, I mean, she does an amazing job. She takes care of pretty much everything. Um, so she knows a lot of, she also helps with the swim team at the college. Her husband, uh, he, he is the, the coach. coach. Yeah. What kind of certification does one have to hold to even apply to be a, a lifeguard? or work at the pool? Well, you have to be Red Cross, um, CPR, and first aid certified. And then you also have to be Red Cross lifeguard certified. Um, but like I said, Amber takes care. She's really great. She's on top of things with that. So. Is it relatively simple to find enough people that have those certifications? Well, you they can sign up and already have them or they can get them they can sign up and amber um, offers the class so oh. they can get certified i actually got certified last summer so um because i helped there for a period of time when the kids went back to school when the kids went back to college and high school we still had lap swim in the morning so um, I'd sit out there and help with last one, but no, you can, we provide the option for them to get certified through us or um, if they were a lifeguard last year and want to come back, the certification's good for two years so oh, they is. could come back and already be certified. You know, nobody likes us here, no old man sitting reminisce, but uh, the old days when uh, we first started uh, Learn to Swim Week at Lincoln Lakes, that was a watershed event in this community and the, Hundreds, of, hundreds of kids, and some adults, I think, uh, were taught to swim out mm -hmm. there, and uh, Red Cross was involved with that, and uh, we had some very dedicated people, made sure that went on every spring, and then just sure as the sun comes up in the east, uh, it always got cold that week. <laughs> and, and it was it was an experience to be out there in that water. It was good. It was cold, but in any event, that was a great thing for this community. And, and uh, there are hundreds of youngsters who went through that water safety. It was a week under the supervision of the, uh, the American Red Cross, and it was a nicely nicely done event. Well, and so important. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it would be just awful. You were talking about somebody who'd lost. A child when they were swimming and that used to happen but the regulations are a little stiffer now and I don't imagine it happens very often anymore well, we thankfully yeah, we hope not thankfully yeah. um, as a as a female mm -hmm. how do you feel about the Lincoln Parks and Recreation Department um, there was a time where if you suggested that maybe we could have a girls softball team as well as a boys softball team they said oh well I, I, I that's, that's just wasteful <laughs> oh my goodness <laughs> you know yeah and, um. uh, one of my kids was especially interested in that kind of thing you know they're everybody's different some like one thing some like dark bread some like white bread you know um, but there there wasn't that much for girls because they didn't think it was appropriate or necessary or mm -hmm. in any way desirable well, she's going back but how do you feel and... about our approach here in Lincoln I to, think it's a good one I mean you have to adapt just like anything with the times and now we do strive to offer programs for everyone um, you know inclusion is a big thing right now in recreation making sure that anyone and everyone that wants to participate can and giving them that option so um, I know just going back to talking about softball we do offer a t-ball um, program in the summer that's co-ed boys and girls can play together and you know that goes really well 
well. We have baseball and softball, and um, we do have a women's league, an adult women's league to play softball. And then just recently, when I got on, um, we have a co-ed 16-inch Chicago-style softball league, which has been great. There's lots of husbands and wives that come out together and play, and it's been a good addition. So always trying to make those little improvements so everyone's included. And, and do you have meetings with other people that are in the same capacity you are and they'll sometimes say well we tried uh, last summer we tried this and it really worked well for us and kind of hop on to those sorts of things yeah we do shop around abby's friends with the director and morton uh -huh. and um, i became friends with the uh, uh, the director in Springfield so we kind of talk and he fills me in because he's been at it longer than I have even though he's younger than me but um, he had a lot of good information for us um, he gives us companies to work with that they've worked with mm -hmm. and that's such a, a good thing for someone because well, and it's so efficient yes mm -hmm. yeah so I mean you never know until you try with anything so um, but it is good to have connections and network with other park districts. We're all doing the same thing for the same cause. Um, but I will say we do have a ton to offer compared to you know mar most towns our size. What we have to offer is amazing. So um, it's just a matter of getting the community to jump on board and realize that we have a good thing going. Do you have good participation though compared to other yeah. directors that you talk with? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think we do. Um, but like I said, with anything, you don't know until you try. So there are times where, you know, things don't go over well, but then you just know for the future. But I think our par participation has been really good. Yeah. I mean, last night I was out there and we had junior railer basketball. Go all of our indoor sports courts were filled with people. And then our aerobic classes, we had 20 people come to class last night. Is that so, right? So, and the whole workout facility was filled. It's just nice to see people enjoying what we have to offer. You know, Abby used the word inclusion a while ago, Mrs. Busby, and once again we sit here in our studios and we've not included our listening public. Uh, we've not invited them to call in. 648-5510. Any have any, uh, the subject matter this morning, Lincoln Park District, out goes the bad air, in comes the good. John. That was Just the old, trying to keep that was humble. old expression we used for, for resuscitation. Out goes the bad air. Those in the days when you kneeled over the face and he's laying there and you're forced to push the air out of his lungs and bring in new... Anyway, John Andrews, uh, after a long faithful service uh, her, serving our community, has earned his retirement uh, in spades. And uh, Abby, uh, Abigail, niece, um, is uh, going to be our new director. 648-5510. Somebody has any questions about our Lincoln Park District, be nice to them now. These are nice young people, folks. But seriously, if you have any questions, uh, comments, or criticism, we'll accept them. So uh, take your time and call in to Abby and John before we uh, ship them off to Lawndale. <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, way back when I was a little kid, I never did learn to swim because I was deathly afraid of water. Uh, what do they teach the people who are lifeguards now? How do they teach them to deal with somebody like me? You know, Somebody like, like you, that's an impossibility. <laughs> <laughs> well, we do offer swim lessons um, for children and anyone that wants to learn how to swim. Um, our lifeguards, I know they do a great job of making sure the kids feel comfortable and taking baby steps in the process of getting them to learn how to swim. So there's different things that I know Amber says to them to try and get them to be, you know, get the kids to have fun but also learn how to swim. So, yeah. Yeah. Well, when, they, when they'd tell me to put my face in the water and blow bubbles, <laughs> I bet me, Buckwheat. <laughs> that isn't going to happen. Yeah. Well, I learned to swim out at Lincoln Lakes. Sure. The lakes, the lake situation is a little different mm -hmm. than a swimming pool. Oh, and, yeah. And, um, you know, I'm sure you remember the second rope spill with yep. the Pasher Intermediate yeah. class. You had to swim out to the second ropes and swim back. 
in pairs. <laughs> so I wasn't real confident in the water to begin with, but I'm chugging along, you know, trying to make it, and my partner panics and starts grabbing me. Oh, gosh. You know? So it didn't build my confidence a whole lot. <laughs> oh, no. But um, the guard, he was in there so fast, he was out to us, and wasn't any problem. But I would rather have done it in a pool, let me tell you. Well, it would have been a little easier. Oh, of course, yeah. it, the thing is with the with a lake it, 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 you go in gradually in a pool it can be four feet before you get yourself wet <laughs> well the uh, Lincoln Lakes has a steeped history uh, as far as a recreation area in this community is concerned uh, here I am uh, uh, the age I am which is rather considerable uh, <laughs> and uh, I recall when that opened up that was a uh, as a result of Lincoln uh, sand and gravel their dredging operations and that was a for those folks who want to just reminisce about a half a second it was a huge sand beach all clean sand and uh, it was a great spot and those folks uh, ran it well and uh, one of the things we did uh, John uh, you can relate to this in the early spring we'd go out and ask for a job and they'd sign us painting or shoveling sand or doing something and we'd get a pass for the summer that way mm -hmm. and that was a cheap way for a kid to earn his right. earn his summer's recreation <laughs> and my folks encouraged that rather strongly <laughs> <laughs> that was walter spatz's outfit that yes, started that oh, wasn't it name. you remember him yeah, yeah but i don't remember him john's too don't you we're working with kids here judith pardon <laughs> yeah i know uh, walter was my neighbor for five years he was a lovely lovely person the, uh, the Lake and Lakes was it was a now mind you, this was Depression time, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, fifteen cents was a lot of money, and I, don't, I have no idea. I can't begin to recall what the what the fare was for those of us who didn't work, but. Uh, those of us who had parents that were on top of things, uh, they guided us out there and made sure we got there to go to work. So we could work for two or three weeks uh, in advance and uh, that get a summer's uh, pass that way. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, along came American Red Cross, so they learned to swim week. And that place was flooded with people of varying descriptions. And the adults, a lot of volunteers, go out there. And, and they'd pair them off according to age, and, and we even had adults learning how to swim. That was a big deal. Um, Abby, uh, what's the number one priority you're going to have as, as you begin to push poor old John off the premises? <laughs> John will still be around. <laughs> <laughs> and, that's, and that's a good thing, Yes, seriously. it is. Um, I don't know. John always taught me, you know, maintain what we have and improve where we can. So moving forward, I think the main priority will be just listening to the community because that's what we're here for is our community and understanding what they need, what they want, and improving where we can, but maintaining what we have. So, Well, those folks who use our Recreation Association facilities out there are well served uh, uh, by the administration. Uh, John has been very dedicated. Dedicated. He comes from a conservative background, and that's why I suggest use what we have and make sure that we make make sure that we have everything that's available that can be available. And uh, uh, what is the membership out there? Is it's rather well? You mean the amount of members, Bill? Mm -hmm. uh, well, the last time I checked was oh, I don't know three or four weeks ago, mm -hmm. and we had thirteen hundred active members. Is that yes. active members? Yes. Oh, now, yeah, some yeah. of them come for a while and let their membership lapse, um, but thirteen hundred right now. Uh, I do recall that. Do we still have a rather dedicated group that shows up there early in the morning to do their workouts? Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, yeah, yes. they're dedicated. They get there even before the door opens. Some of them waiting to get in. You know that's such an important part of our com community for for all kinds of reasons but one is the business of like this group that would come in the morning uh, and they fellowship while they're exercising oh, you know sure. yeah. and that means so much to people as the years go by because some people just let themselves become captives in their home and it's so unhealthy so the rec really serves a purpose for people who aren't 29 and aren't coming out there to join the basketball team right. mm -hmm. now, one thing before we uh, leave today I would, I'd like to let everyone know we've done some major projects um, with tax dollars over the past four years just to let them know where things are going 
Um, we redid our HVAC system at a cost of three hundred and fifty thousand dollars, just to give them an idea of what we're dealing with. Yeah. Um, we we're in the middle of a roofing project, which is uh, seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars. Doing all the buildings, we did the first building. We're doing it in stages. Mm -hmm. So, um, and this summer, this spring, we'll be redoing our roadway around to the back, uh -huh. our entrance way and redoing our parking lot which is about a two hundred and sixty thousand dollar project see now those are not cheap no, endeavors at all but if you anymore. don't do it and don't do it in a timely manner you end up with the kind of problems some of the other people around here have right. yeah. and fortunately we have managed our money over the years and we have the money to do it so um, I'm sure there's a lot of park districts that don't or aren't in that position mm -hmm. so uh, we're very fortunate but it's because of our spending habits yeah so, right yeah. tell us about your board uh, how many we have on our board and uh, are they an active board Abby? Um, do we have five? five? Five. Yep, five board members. And they are. Uh, we actually have a board meeting tonight. Um, but yeah, they do a good job and they keep things in line. We have Donnie Peasley. Mm -hmm. He's our president. Uh, good man. Dave, Dave Perring. He's mm -hmm. been on there for 20 long, years. Long time. Um, Gary Nodeen. He got off the board. I talked him into coming back. He's a great board member. Um, Laura Duffer's been there probably 10 years, maybe. I don't know, just guessing. And then um, uh, the coroner, Bobby Thomas, he got on the last election. So um, they've been a great board for me to work with. So Well, that's important for the administration and the board to be able to work hand in hand. But of course, the reason for that is here in Logan County, you all are serving as, uh, for the same common good. You all have the same goal in mind which makes it working hand in glove a lot easier. Yes. When you does. sometimes on some of these boards you have somebody who is a, who will be an automatic naysayer and uh, I'm against it no matter what and uh, that's not much fun to work with people like that. So right. we're happy that you we have that kind of dedicated board with a common interest. Now the good thing they only have one vote, so. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> now, Mr. Peasley will be uh, a busy guy, uh, uh, I think, after the election. Uh, by the way, uh, I, shall we charge him $10 for this commercial, Tom? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Case anybody doesn't know, no, Dr. Peasley's running for coroner in this community, and uh, his opposition is entitled to the same uh, 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 same mention, I guess, Mr. Sprague. So we should, uh, in, in the event of equal opportunity employers, we'll mention that. Uh, the point of mentioning that is, for goodness sakes, folks, get out and vote. Uh, and uh, uh, I, uh, without hesitation, urge you to seriously vote for this referendum that uh, is so desperately needed to make this courthouse uh, the building it is and, and, and was. So, um, Abby, um, how's the pay scale? <laughs> no, no comment. <laughs> no, no. No. So, um, you, in your activities, you have uh, frequent meetings with your staff and so forth, mm -hmm. and uh, there's there's just a lot. Of, it, it, you just don't stand in there and step in and say, I'm running this show. There's a lot of cooperation needed mm -hmm. and uh, a lot of uh, give and take with you and your staff. I should think, I, I really don't envy you. I don't think I could keep all the balls in the air <laughs> because you have so many programs and so many different venues out there it's got to be a challenge and John's done a whale of a job and I know you will too yeah. but uh, you got to be real jugglers yeah and once again it comes down to staff I mean yeah. I had a great staff to work with and um, so it made it easy on me by the way, you're That's up front lucky. staff, you're, you're front desk, for yes. want of a better word, very pleasant. Uh, on top of things, when you walk in the door, uh, they're there to greet you with a smile and uh, how can you be helped? And that's important. Sure it is. And that's Christine Logeman. Mm -hmm. She's been with the Park District for many years. And she does a great job. Yep. Well, I'm glad to have that shout out for Christine. Uh, uh, I didn't know who it was, but I just know that I, 
and I'm just among everybody that else walks in that door, that they're well served. And it's it's important to have a, that set of heavy Well, it must be a good place to work or people wouldn't stay for right. years and years. Right. It's very enjoyable, mm -hmm. helping the community. Mm -hmm. Well, should we ask Mr. Andrews what he's going to do with all of his spare time now? <laughs> Well, <laughs> take a nap on Tuesdays, maybe, or something. <laughs> well, this week I've been pretty busy at home helping yeah. Deb and paint the house, painting inside and trimming out, and um, so I've been pretty busy. Uh, just trying to keep the days filled. Um, I'm going to go in and help Abby here a little bit, print some T-shirts or print some shirts. We do our own printing. Oh, do you? Art district, yeah. yeah. All the materials that come out of do you, for for all your various teams and everything mm -hmm. that'll be forming now. You yeah. do the shirts. Yeah, oh, well, my. I used to be in that business, so I brought that in about two or three years ago because uh -huh. uh, I knew how to do it. Yeah. And so it saved us labor charges, and you know I print up to 400 shirts at a time. I mean, you have to do double prints and things. So, so you're not going to retire from that position. <laughs> well, I don't know. We'll, we'll see. We'll see. <laughs> but well, I'm planning to go back and work in the spring a little bit on the fields and do some mowing. When the kids don't, when the kids aren't there yet for the summer work, uh -huh. there's a little time period where they need a little help. So, in the spring and the fall, I might be working a little bit. Well, that'll that'll be good though. Oh, it's great because yeah. you know all those people. Out out there, it'll kind of be like old home week yeah, for unless you. Abby doesn't hire me. So. No, stop. <laughs> well, as we close, we want to, uh, again, we thank John Andrews in the, at the beginning of a program this morning, but I think it's appropriate, Mrs. Busby, that uh, we uh, kind of give uh, John a little hand as he uh, steps down uh, and passes the baton to Abby. Uh, you've done a fine job for us, Mr. Andrews, Thank you. and we appreciate uh, the time and, and the commitment. And it takes uh, a lot of commitment, uh, and they're putting up with a lot of stuff that maybe the average person wouldn't want to know yeah, about. But I like doing it, so yeah, yeah. you know that made it easier. Well, you had good training, and Abby, we uh, welcome you aboard. Thank you. Uh, We'll close with uh, the closing I liked. I came across this some time ago, and I think it's really appropriate. Uh, and it's a very simple statement. Be the reason somebody smiled today. Thank you for Viewpoint.